Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to talk about expandable objects and how you can make them. So uh, let's take a look at an expandable object that I made here. I just uh, pre-wrote code here. Well, it's already been written like yesterday. And I'm just going to go over it just because I don't feel like typing too much today. Um, or maybe because I have a, a large to-do list, I would open this and show you, but you'd think I'm crazy. Um, so here is the expandable object this is a vertex class within the super control that I wrote and um, basically with expandable objects like this simple ones you want to be able to edit the individual values and you want to be able to edit all of the values using a single string that would be parsed up here and that's pretty much all you need all there is to an expandable object so here's the super control. You have the um, vertex property. Make sure that you're actually initializing it. Uh, if it's a struct, then the cell is going to be blank. If it's not initialized, if it's a if it's a reference type, then it's something different will happen. Something probably a bit more unexpected. Um, so here is the vertex class. Um, Basically, I'm d I have my properties here. So X, Y, and Z, they're settable. No constructor is very simple. And then I have the toString method. So basically, the toString method is going to return maybe a name property. Or if it's a simple object like this, you might want to sum it all up into a single string. So I have my X, Y, and Z uh, printed out here. They're spaced by a comma and a space. So let's take a look at that. Uh, this is actually what's returned or what's displayed in the master cell or the parent cell. I'll show you that. It just uh, You've seen it. So there's the, the parent cell, 45, 67, 78. That's what the two-string method returns. Okay, and you may be wondering why I have refresh properties repaint. Um, and I'll show you that right now so that's when you actually set the value so if I were to change X to 66 the master cell up here will update immediately if you don't have the the refresh properties attribute added to your properties and you change them then the master cell won't update okay so this is how it works you need to define you need to derive from expandable object converter so it will define a converter that the property grid view can use and then you decorate your class with the appropriate converter type the one that you defined so uh, it's basically just a, a component model thing uh, it's not I expected it to be in implement like an, an interface that we'd implement but it's something it's this let's take a look at the vertex converter so in this case we can simply return true when we're uh, overriding can convert from uh, just it determines whether or not the user can actually submit the string uh, in our case it's always going to be a string because we're just using this for the property grid view and nothing else so you can return true or maybe if you're uh, not lazy you can return source type is equal to type of string I don't think that's very necessary in our case. And the second method that you need to override is convert from. So this is going to allow us to convert the um, inputted text in the master cell from a string to the appropriate object. So all we need to concern ourselves with is the value argument that's passed in. Sorry. Uh, this is the master cell string. So I have regular expressions so I can parse the text loosely. Um, so uh, basically it has to look like this. So it, it would be three numbers. They'd be separated by commas and a space. There's an optional space. And of course you can have uh, more spaces in there at the end. Uh, and it will trim it for you. Well, it won't trim it, but it will ignore it, like 
the size and location properties will when you're dealing with controls. So basically I'm just taking in value to string as the as the input because that's what it is. That's what's inputted into the master cell. And then I'm just checking to see if the match is a success. If it is, then we're going to construct our object using the groups and return it. If the match isn't a success, it's going to go down here and it's going to try to convert something that it can't convert and you'll get that common warning message box that you would get. So I'm going to try to so I can add like spaces to the end of this and a bunch of spaces all in around the numbers. Nothing will happen but once I add letters in there you're going to get this property value is not valid. You can hit cancel to reset to the original value or the last uh, yeah the original value the last value that you typed in or you can hit OK and it's not going to reset it just like it would with all the other ones. Sorry. And that's it. See ya.